On today's episode, the Clippers getting their second straight win against the Houston Rockets after four consecutive defeats. I talked about the small ball being an issue, and what adjustment did Ty Lue make with Ivica Zubats in foul trouble? Uh, enter Moses Brown to save the day? Gonna be talking about that and more on today's Locked on Clippers. You are Locked on Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir. You are locking in with the clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen every day. Your team every day. Day. I am your host, Darian Vaziri, going into my 18th season as a Clipper fan. Also, have my own YouTube channel and podcast called Dime Dropper. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel for live post game recaps, NBA content, vlogs, and more at Dime Dropper on YouTube. And of course, subscribe to Locked on Clippers on YouTube. By the way, this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, where you can make your daily fantasy entries against the Prize Picks projections. But Locked On Clippers finally reached 1,000 subscribers, so I want to give a big thank you to everybody listening, the whole entirety of Clipper Nation that listens to Locked On Clippers, and of course the Locked On Podcast Network for all the support. We are finally at 1,000. All 30 NBA local teams covered by Locked On are at 1,000 subscribers. It's just time to put that number and take it to the sky, Clipper Nation. Let's keep on subscribing, keep telling your friends, because today's episode, gonna be talking about the Clippers' win against the Houston Rockets in Houston, and starting with Moses Brown and how he came out of nowhere with Ivica Zubats in foul trouble. Ty Lue abandoned the small ball lineup, went for desperate times, calling for desperate measures, put in Moses Brown, who a lot of Clipper fans, including myself, have not been very confident in, came in and gave the Clippers huge minutes in the second half to help them win the game. And then, of course, the story every single game that the Clippers play without Kawhi Leonard. How good is Paul George going to be? Is he going to be the best player on the court? Going to be talking about that as well. But let's start with Moses Brown. The reason why I'm starting with him is because I think it was just a huge difference that Ty Lue said, you know what, I'm going to abandon the small ball lineup right now. It hasn't really been working much for us this season. Did not work much in the first half, so I'm going to put in Moses Brown with Ivica Zubats in foul trouble. How do we get to that point? Well, the first quarter was actually a great start for the Clippers. They came out with really high defensive intensity, which we love to see. They've been really poor to start certain first quarters this season, namely against Phoenix and the two games at Oklahoma City. And... They came out strong defensively and knocking down shots, mainly knocking down their three ball. This was the second game of the Clippers season in which they shot over 35% from three. They shot 36.4% in this one, 12 for 33 from deep. They can still shoot better than that, still miss some good looks. In particular, Nico Batum, Reggie Jackson, and John Wall shooting a combined 1 for 10 from deep. But the Clippers led by 10 after 1, and then in the second quarter, you can even say the run started late first quarter, the Rockets found success again with Ivica Zubats on the bench. They didn't see much resistance at the rim. Garuba got four offensive rebounds in this game for the Houston Rockets, and a couple of those were in that stretch. There was even a time where Tari Eason got an offensive rebound on a free throw, on a free throw and got a four-point possession. He had three offensive rebounds as well. So if you look at the offensive rebounding department, the Clippers had nine in the game. The Houston Rockets had 16. And as a result, they out-rebounded the Clippers by seven in the game, 50 to 43. That small ball unit was just not working. Again, no Robert Covington, no Kawhi Leonard. So the Clippers, just not much resistance on the interior. I thought they did a better job of staying in front of the ball. But just those rebounds, it's just tough. You're just not that big. And the Rockets are a fairly athletic team. So... And people that I, two people I thought did a much better job staying in front were Reggie Jackson and Norman Powell on defense. Thought they were much better on that end. But the Houston Rockets cut an 18-point lead down to zero. They basically came back. Yeah, they, they came back. And they did it with Kevin Porter Jr. They did it with Alperin Shangun. Kevin Porter Jr. to start that second quarter, he's making some tough shots. Step backs over everybody. Ivica Zubats, Norman Powell. He was great. 
in that second quarter. Alpern Shangun was getting Ivica Zubac in foul trouble. I will say he has a knack for selling fouls, but I also like Shangun's post game. I really have enjoyed what I've seen from him as a even as a Clipper fan in these last two games. He's a skilled player. I saw that video of him last season working with Akeem Olajuwon, and uh, I always like when players tap into the greats by their organization, and who better to learn from than Akeem Olajuwon in terms of post game? And Ivica Zubac was getting in foul trouble. He had three fouls in the sec by the second quarter, and I was just like surprised at the way Zoo was defending with three fouls. He's like playing up on Alperin Shangun chest to chest, like bumping into him. And it was when he got his fourth foul late in that second quarter, it was an obvious one. And I and Zoo was complaining about it. I just don't get it. It was he got away with one foul initially when Shangun made the initial move, and then he bumped him again. So it was just obviously going to be a foul. It was his fourth foul, and I was really nervous at that point because I was like, the small ball unit hasn't really done well, haven't looked any better in this game. And even you know what's funny? Ty Lu took the suggestion as if he was listening to Locked On Clippers, and he play, basically played it only with John Wall and, and Norman Powell off the bench. And it still just wasn't enough because he started Luke Kennard, and I think that's the reason why he started him, so he could go with Terrence Mann, Amir Coffey, Norman Powell, Reggie, and I'm sorry, Norman Powell, John Wall, and Nico Batum. And Nico Batum had a tough stretch in that first half too. I thought his defense was poorer than usual, not really doing much on the boards. Uh, he only actually played 14 minutes in the game. But the Rockets cut it down to a three-point game. It was 53-56 at the half. And Ivica Zubac was going to start the second half with four fouls. But Ty Lu made the decision to go to Moses Brown, who I have said... I don't really trust much. He looks slow, doesn't look very athletic at the NBA level, even though he's massive. And I don't trust him defending in pick and roll and just being agile enough to be very effective against NBA competition. Well, tonight I was dead wrong, and a lot of Clipper fans were dead wrong because Moses Brown came in and made an immediate impact, rolling to the basket well, getting dimed up by Reggie Jackson and Paul George around the basket and going up strong and finishing with two hands with some dunks. He also was decent in drop coverage on defense. He was really dropping. It looked like he was even just camping in the paint at times, like he was playing in his zone. But the Rockets players just didn't really convert from the mid-range in the second half, besides Jalen Green, who in that third quarter actually had a great quarter that kept the Rockets kind of neck and neck with the Clippers for a while there. But overall, they're just... We're in a, they're not a great in the mid-range, and I think the Clippers did a better job of getting over screens in this game. I thought overall the defensive effort and focus was much better in this game than in most games for the Clippers this season. And I say that because even in like the Laker game, for example, the first game of the season, there were a lot of open threes that the Lakers missed that were good looks. This game, I thought the Clippers did a much better job of just guarding straight up. You know, the Rockets only shot 29% from deep, 11 for 38. And I thought Reggie Jackson, Norman Powell, as I said, two guys who haven't been great on defense so far this season for the Clips, did a much better job getting over the screens and being a little more physical. Like there was one play where Reggie Jackson actually caused a turnover when Jabari Smith Jr. was trying to post him up. Reggie Jackson went for the steal, poked it away. Jabari Smith pushed him, went the other way. So better job getting over the screens. And that made Moses Brown able to kind of just camp and didn't have to step up too much, leaving his man open for the role. And Moses Brown did a good job of rebounding as well in those he, in those units when he played. He had seven rebounds, three of those offensive rebounds, and there were one and one he got from I believe it was John Wall in transition, and then obviously the the highlight play that John Wall had to him on the dunk. I mean Moses Brown was doing his thing. He came in and gave the Clippers a much needed boost. 13 points, 7 rebounds, no turnovers. He was plus 6, and he did all that in 12 minutes. And you know what's interesting? Maybe the Clippers can look at Moses Brown as a backup center for just around those kind of minutes. Now, the counter argument is it's Houston. They're not a very good team. They're not going to have a ton of guys that are super, super skilled that are going to punish you in that in-between game and drop coverage. And they don't have as many shooters that make you pick your poison as well. 
So we're just going to have to see, but it's a good sign that maybe you can play Moses Brown for 10 minutes against certain teams. Just 10 minutes. That's all you need. And then when Robert Covington and Kawhi play, then you can more easily go to the small ball. But it was a really great adjustment from Ty Louie. Trusted Moses Brown. Moses Brown pushed the Clippers' lead up, and they never really looked back. Clippers win at 109-101. But going to be talking about the main man, Paul George. How well did he play? Did he lead by example? Was he the best player on the court? And the rest of the supporting cast. Story of the game is coming up. On Thursday, I'm taking Shea Gilgis-Alexander to score 30 or more points. I'm taking Nikola Jokic to have 10 rebounds. And I'm taking Steph Curry to have over 5 threes. And where am I doing that? I'm going to be doing it on prize picks. It's a daily fantasy app and website, not a gambling site. And you make entries every single day. And all you got to do is pick two to five players and predict if they will score more or less than the prize picks projection. You can win 10 times up your money on 10 times your money on any entry, and it's not competing against a specific person. It's just you and the projections available. And prize picks offers projections in any sport that you watch. You can be betting on the World Series. Oh, I'm sorry, placing projections on the World Series with the Astros and the Phillies. You can be placing those entries on the NHL. You can also be doing it for the NBA, of course, and NFL and more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Just download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code LOCKED ON in all caps. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter the promo code LOCKED ON at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. All right. Thanks for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day. For your second listen today, check out Locked On Sports Today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. All righty. We are back, and it's time to talk about the Clippers' second straight win. And, oh, I got to tell you, it feels good to get a little winning streak going again, you know. It's not been very many winnings. It's only been one winning streak, if you want to even call it that, for the Clippers this season, winning their first two games of the season. But then a four-game losing streak after that. But hopefully, this is the start of a little streak for the Clips, winning two straight games against the same team. Two games that I had chalked up as wins before the season, duh. But I'm just disappointed still the Clippers did not get those two wins against OKC. Because if they did, right now they would be 6-2 and two and just in a much more comfortable spot. But it is what it is. Got to look to move on. A big reason the Clippers did not win one of the games against OKC was because Paul George got outplayed by Shea Gilgis-Alexander. And Paul George was just not the best version of himself. Not close to it. Well, in these last two games against the Houston Rockets, Paul George has been Paul George. And that is the best player on the court when he's playing against the Houston Rockets. He was great. He was solid from the start. He got into the mid-post a little bit more to start the game. And you know what happens when he's in the mid-post so far this season, just dominating. Eric Gordon, he made one nice strip on him in the second quarter, but overall he had not much for him. And the Rockets didn't have much for him at all. Hit a beautiful turnaround over his... I, actually, I don't even know if it was a turnaround. I think he was going to the turnaround. Pump faked. Eric Gordon didn't even bite. Knocked it down right over him. That was in the first quarter. PG also hit a three against Alperin Shangoon, who was really getting cooked in drop coverage uh, for, in the first quarter. The Clippers really were putting Shangoon in that pick and roll, and they were getting a lot of good looks out of it. Paul George coming off for a screen when he was just dropping too deep. Even Reggie Jackson got a bucket early on in that drop coverage against Shangoon. And Paul George was finding guys as well. You know, Luke Kennard hit a transition three, and I thought the Rockets were just not playing smart basketball in the first quarter, leaving Luke Kennard wide open for three in transition, taking rushed quick shots that didn't make the Clippers' defense work that hard. And that's why the Clippers got off to an 18-point lead. John, Paul George, I thought he honestly was quiet, though, in the first half mainly. He got going more in the second half. And that's one thing about Paul George. He still can shoot more. I mean, in this game, he shot... 20 shots, which I like. When he shot 20 or more shots this season, it's been really good things for the Clippers. But I think he should even look to shoot a little bit more than that, personally. Just because this, it feels like there are stretches in the game that go on where he just hasn't shot in a while. 
And he was fairly quiet in the first half, but I really like how he turned up in the second half. And especially in late later in that third quarter, he was in some really tough contested jumpers over you name it, like anybody. You know, Jabari Smith, Kevin Porter, Jalen Green, didn't matter. Paul George was just getting buckets, just getting buckets. And he's just so fun to watch when he's in that kind of mode, when he's playing confidently like that. But another reason the Clippers got off to such a great start and led by 18 points was Marcus Morris Sr. Again, he's brought it on both ends of the floor. You cannot say enough about this guy right now. And I, I am going to say it for the millionth time. I'm going to be doing it all season right now. I sincerely apologize for what I was saying about Marcus Morris Sr. to start the season in terms of getting rid of him and he look, his presence on the team is redundant. His presence on the team is a necessity right now. His ability to hit shots from all three levels. And this season, he's added that first level again. He's been getting to the basket a little bit better. I don't think he really got... I can't recall him getting an easy basket in this game. But he's just looked quicker this season. He looked like he's in the best physical shape he's been in with the Clippers. Especially to start the season. As I, as we've talked about, he played in his first preseason pre for the Clippers this season. So Marcus, again, getting off to a great start. He was getting what he wanted on Kevin Porter Jr., shooting right over the top of him, hitting mid-ranges, a couple turnarounds, hit threes. And he did that in the first quarter. He did that in the third quarter and hit a big shot that ultimately was the dagger, in my opinion, to put the Clippers up by 12 with three minutes left in the fourth quarter. He hit a dagger three from the right wing. But Marcus Morris Sr. was just awesome. And again, as I mentioned in the first segment, it was that second unit. You know, Nico Batum played tonight. Amir Coffey played tonight. John Wall played tonight, of course. And John Wall, I thought this was maybe his worst game for so far this season. I thought he was really over-dribbling in the second half and just looking to do too much. He was 3 for 10 from the field, 0 for 3 from deep, and one of them – one or two of them were just not really great shots, in my opinion. At least one of them. Can't remember if I had a problem with two of them. He also had two turnovers. Only played 15 minutes. So it kind of it kind of sucks that Reggie Jackson's getting, and I'm going to say this, I don't mean to sound mean when I say that, but Reggie Jackson's getting 33 minutes and John Wall's only getting 15. He didn't play very well on Wednesday night, John Wall. But it's okay. It happens. Everyone's going to have bad games. He hasn't really had one this season. But when is when is the minutes when are his minutes going to increase? Like the Clippers are going to need more minutes played out of John Wall, considering the way he started this season and considering the way Reggie Jackson has started his. I thought he played better in this game, Reggie Jackson. I really do. I've mentioned his defense several times in this episode. I thought in the third quarter he made some good plays in the pick and roll with Moses Brown. But overall, there were stretches in that second quarter when the Rockets came back from 18 down. And in that third quarter when the Rockets were staying in the game, that Reggie Jackson, mainly that second quarter really, but Reggie Jackson was just shooting some terrible shots, not penetrating, just doing way too much, and just taking shots away from the, from the rest of the team, not moving the ball well. And it's like, you're the point guard on the floor. If you're going to be off-ball Reggie, be off-ball Reggie. But when he's on the ball, just kind of dilly-dallying on the ball, not really doing anything and settling for a contested shot, it's just not it. It's just not it. And right now, it's been really detrimental for the Clippers. And you know, if the Clippers are playing against a better team in this game, they may not have been as fortunate. So Reggie Jackson, 12 points, 4 for 11 from the field, 0 for 4 from deep. He was plus 11, though, on the court, mainly because, you know, I think his defense was solid, but he was also surrounded by good players in the starting lineup. And Paul George and Marcus Morris, the two guys that scored over 20 points to the Clippers were two of those players. Luke Kennard, he only got three shots up in this game, made two of them, and they were all three-pointers. One of those was in transition in the first quarter when no rocket picked him up. I thought that was very interesting. But again, they're a young team. They're going to make mistakes. But the second quarter, as I said, the small ball lineup kind of got killed. You know, Amir Coffey played seven minutes, but he was pretty quiet. Didn't really play in the second half at all. And... You know, it was neck, to, neck and neck going into the half. One thing I'll say about the Clippers, they ended quarters fairly poorly, but they managed to bail themselves out by taking a little momentum into each quarter, in the first half at least. 
by making like buzzer beating threes. Terrence Mann hit a buzzer beater in the first quarter from three to put the Clippers up 34 24. And then in the second quarter, Nico Batum had a four point play after the Clippers went down by one on a touchdown pass from Marcus Morris. That was a big play going into halftime. And the Clippers ultimately made the big plays in the second half to get the job done. But going coming up to finish off, just going to be talking about the little extra things, little individual performances for anybody I didn't get to, and some of the things that the Clippers need to clean up if they want to beat a very, very hot San Antonio team, although they did get trounced by the Toronto Raptors on Wednesday night. So hopefully they can make a little bit of progress there. Going to be talking about that coming up. So the Clippers... Winning the game 109 to 101, outscoring the Rockets 30 to 26 in the third quarter. And that was in large part due to Paul George ending the quarter well. And of course, Moses Brown, who I mentioned so much in this podcast. But Moses Brown came in as a result of that small ball not working very well again. And even though it was Amir Coffey, Terrence Mann, Norman Powell, John Wall, Nico Batum. Nico Batum just wasn't playing great in that first half. And I thought he actually played better in the second half. Had two nice blocks in the game. And one of those was in the second half. The first, there was one really nice block. I forget who tried to Euro step on him. He just swatted out of bounds in the second half. But he did get fouled out. We've seen better games from Nico. Don't think it's a big deal. Four points for him. He was one for four from the field in only 14 minutes. But a guy that I haven't even mentioned once in this podcast so far that I thought was really solid in doing his job was Norman Powell. The only thing I thought he could have done better was you know, take care of the ball a little bit. He had three turnovers. Clippers had 14 turnovers in this game, which compared to the rest of the season is is a little bit <laughs> it's a little bit better. Still not great. And the big reason the Rockets got back in the game in the second quarter was because the Clippers committed four turnovers in the first five minutes of the quarter. They had eight turnovers at that point of the game, and they actually only had six for the rest of it. So they cleaned it up a bit. And it was only the second time this season where the Clippers had less turnovers than their opponents. Clippers had 15 turnovers in this game. Rockets had 19. And guess what the other game was where the Clippers had less turnovers than their opposition? The Rockets again. (laughs) on Halloween. So that young team, you know, thank God you're not turning the ball over more than them, but the Clippers still need to do a better job taking care of the ball. Overall, Norman Powell, I thought was solid. I didn't think he forced it at all. He shot six times. He made three of them. He was one for two from deep coming off screens and doing some good things. He had three rebounds as well. And I thought he just played better defense, but just him being in with that small ball lineup made his plus minus look bad. He was minus eight, but Again, single game plus minus is a bogus statistic. I only use it when it backs up the eye test. And Norman Powell was really solid in this game. So I like him off the bench. It's very clear that Norman Powell coming off the bench is another takeaway from this game. It's a good thing. But the main thing is, do the Clippers continue to play Moses Brown occasionally? Does he only need, I mean, it's only like a 15-minute thing max, really. But I think you're going to have to test him against better opposition. I thought Terrence Mann came off the bench and gave the Clippers some decent minutes. Again, when everybody's plus minus is going to look bad in that small ball lineup, everybody's minutes are going to look bad in that small ball lineup. But Terrence Mann had 15, played 15 minutes, was two for three from the field. One was on a beautiful backdoor cut on a nice design play by Ty Lue coming off a timeout. And then he also hit a three, only shot two of them, made one of them. So Terrence Mann's actually started out the season shooting the ball well in terms of efficiently, efficiently from the field, not necessarily from three. But he had five points, two for three. Played energetic defense when he was in, but only played 15 minutes. And as I said, John Wall only played 15 minutes and had six points on three for 10 shooting. For me, his worst game so far as a Clipper, but it's not a big deal. I think maybe he was pressing because he wanted to prove a point to Houston. But I think John Wall needs to also remember that he's he's surrounded by really good players. And there were times where, you know, Norman Powell's having a good game. Why not get him the ball a little more? Why not let him look to get him involved a little more, get him running off screens a little bit more? Thought John Wall in those, in the, I don't remember if it was early fourth quarter or late third quarter he was just trying to do a little bit too much but overall marcus morris and paul george brought the clippers home paul george with a couple of tough buckets two straight one of them was a beautiful one going to the rim against shangun and then a careless pass by kevin porter jr picked off by reggie jackson and Marcus Morris Sr. made the Rockets pay with a big right wing three, and it was not even open either. 
and that put the Clippers up 12 with three minutes left. I also want to say that Marcus Morris made some really big shots in the third quarter when the game was just really, like, I don't want to say there for the taking, but the Rockets were pushing the Clippers' limits. You know, Jalen Green was starting to make shots. The Clippers were going underneath screens with him, and he was hitting shots, hit a nice mid-range pull-up when somebody closed out on him. Jalen just played a lot better, and he actually had a, he broke his shooting slump. He's been in a shooting slump, and he was 9 for 17 from the field and 3 for 8 from 3 in this game with 22 points. So Jalen Green had a solid game, and then Kevin Porter Jr., had a solid game as well. He had 22 points, 7 boards, and 7 assists, but he did turn the ball over 6 times, and as I said, the Rockets turned the ball over 19 times, so he was a big reason for that. 7 for 19 from the field for him. Didn't shoot great from 3, though. 3 for 9 for him, but he still made his impact, and he made his presence felt, especially in that early second quarter when the Rockets came back from 18 down, and then probably their best player in the game was Alpern Shangun, but in the pick and roll, he is not great so far to start his young career. He had 26 points and 13 rebounds, so he totally got the better of Zubats, but he also fouled out in this game. And also, a note I should also mention is that the Clippers held Eric Gordon to zero points. Eric Gordon got the Rockets off to that solid start in the first in the game on, on Monday, and the Clippers did a much better job limiting him. He had zero points. It was 0 for 4, so... That was good. I think the Clippers just need to manage to try to play two straight quarters of good basketball. They've really seemed to struggle with that so far this season. That's something they just got to clean up. But overall, it was big that they got the win. And I think in large part is obviously the Moses Brown thing. Paul George playing like the best player on the court. And Marcus Morris Sr. just continuing to play amazing. And one thing I would be disappointed not to mention is that Marcus Morris Sr. got 10 rebounds. He was the leading rebounder for the Clippers in this game because Ivica Zubats was in foul trouble and only played 25 minutes. Ivica Zubats had 5.6 rebounds, only one block in this one, two for five from the field in 25 minutes. Just needs to be smarter. Can't be getting three fouls and then committing a fourth foul. You know, you can also blame the coaching staff for leaving him in, but the coaching staff is putting trust in him to not get a foul, and it was an obvious foul. So you want to see Zubats make smarter decisions there. And then Marcus Morris, 21 points, 10 rebounds, 8 for 14 from the field, 4 for 8 from deep. There were some big shots here in that third quarter to break some tough spells for the Clippers offensively. I remember one right wing three very vividly to put the Clippers up by four. It was a big shot. And Marcus Morris Sr. just continued to make big shots in this game and continues to make big shots this season. Reggie Jackson, 4 for 11, 0 for 4 from deep, 12 points. Needs to be so much smarter. I really am a little nervous about how big of a role he's had so far this season and what he's done with it. I love Reggie Jackson, but oof, he needs to step it up and fast. Paul George, the player of the game for me. 28 points, 4 rebounds, 5 assists. He did turn the ball over 5 times, and the Clippers only turned it over 4. I shouldn't say only, but Clippers turned it over 14 times, so he accounted for more than 33% of the Clippers' turnovers. Needs to be better there. Actually, the Clippers did turn it over 15 times. So he had a third of the Clippers' turnovers. But 28 points, 4 rebounds, and 5 assists on 10 for 20 shooting and 3 for 8 from deep in 37 minutes was enough to get the job done done. Norman Powell with nine points and three boards, three for six in 24 minutes. The Clippers are winners for the second straight game, 109-101 against the Rockets. They will be playing next on Friday against the Spurs, who despite a solid start to the season, solid is an understatement, a really good start to the season for what they were expected to do, just lost to the Toronto Raptors by 43 at home on Wednesday night. So hopefully the Clippers can build off that with a uh, and beat a wounded animal there. In San Antonio. And I'll obviously have a post game pod after that one. If you want to follow me, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Jumper Pod. Remember to subscribe to Locked On Clippers. And I want today's question to be Do you think Moses Brown should just get minutes going forward? I'm not talking too many minutes. Just should he be in the rotation going forward? You let me know in the comments. Thank you for listening. And you already know the age old proverb Go Clippers. That's two, in a, two wins in a row. Let's see if we can make it three. We probably should.